Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Buffalo Fanatics Podcast. I am your host. Fern Banatine. You can reach me on Twitter. It's at F Banaty. That's at F B A N N A T Y. If you want to get a hold of me and talk Buffalo Bills, that's the best way to do it. And we are now only hours away from preseason NFL kickoff. We have the Buffalo Bills hosting the Indianapolis Colts this evening at New Era Field. And we are going to get you ready for that game. We're going to prime you and I'm going to talk about what I'm most anticipating, looking forward to see tonight uh, from a Buffalo Bills perspective. We're also going to talk a little bit about the Indianapolis Colts team and what I think of their team and perhaps some players and matchups to look out for tonight And uh, from a Colts perspective. But before we do that, we have some catching up to do in terms of training camp. Uh, there's been quite a bit of news and developments over the last week since the last podcast and let's uh, let's catch up on things. Of course, training camp ended this past Tuesday, and uh, since we last talked, unfortunately, the the biggest news of the week is probably the continuous injuries, in particular on the offensive line. News broke this last Monday that Adrian Waddle, our offensive tackle, who we signed in the offseason off the New England Patriots, has torn his right quadricep. He is out for the season. Uh, Also, of course, we talked on last podcast about uh, Mitch Morse concussion issues. He's still out indefinitely, and that's obviously a great cause for concern given his previous concussion history and what the expectations are for him to solidify this offense. So all of a sudden, with these continued injuries, uh, also Spencer Long and John Feliciano have been in it out of practice. Uh, all of a sudden, it looks like a position of a relative death going into this uh, training camp has turned into a bit of an area of concern. Uh, I think all of these injuries have limited what we can do in terms of getting a solid, consistent uh, starting rotation out there, or even the ability for the front office to evaluate who is going to start at what position. Uh, Over the past week, we've moved Cody Ford, our rookie offensive tackle, who was struggling at offensive tackle. We've moved him to right guard to try him out there. And then to replace Waddle, the Bills have signed offensive tackle Jerron Jones, Uh, For those who aren't familiar with Jones, he was a defensive tackle in college for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Had a pretty decent college career. And now with Jones, there were a few character concerns and that followed him into the draft. In his draft year in 2017, he ended up going undrafted. Uh, He bounced around with a few teams since then and he has since switched from defensive tackle to offensive tackle. Uh, He's definitely a high upside type athlete but I don't think he's the type of player that we should expect to A, uh, make the team unless he really surprises, or B, uh, actually get any playing time. And I don't think he's the he's the guy that's going to replace Adrian Waddle as our swing tackle. Uh, I think best case scenario at the tackle position now is that Cordy Ford uh, develops at least into at least into a guy who could be a swing tackle. Uh, we still have Ty Nuseki who could likely start at right tackle. That would give us three pretty solid talk tackles in Deion Dawkins, Ford, and Niseki. We've also been sniffing around a veteran Sam Young, who played for us previously and spent a few years as a swing tackle for the Miami Dolphins. Certainly not an ideal situation to bring him in and have him make the roster as a swing tackle. But that's where we are right now uh, when the depth's been a little bit compromised with uh, Cody Ford's struggles and him having to move inside to guard because of some nagging injuries on the interior offensive line and of course now with Waddle who was likely going to be our swing tackle going into the season or somehow find a role at least maybe as a fourth tackle uh, out for the season and between him and Morse and John Feliciano and Spencer Long being a little bit banged up a position of strength has now gone into a position of mild concern I would say I think we can probably put uh, five pretty solid starters out there, but if anyone else goes down, and uh, that's where my concern is, is that we're we're actually starting to lack some depth along the offensive line. Now, the other problem is that, and I've talked about this a little bit on previous podcasts, is that we have a lot of new guys out there, and offensive lines often need some time to gel and build chemistry together. Uh, they need to learn where the guys beside them are going to be and how they position themselves. 
And I've always thought it would be ideal if the Bills can solidify a starting five as soon as possible in training camp and let them continuously grow throughout training camp and the preseason together. It doesn't look like that's going to happen, unfortunately, mostly because of all the injuries. We've had to mix and match a few guys. So I think we're at the 11th hour where we really have to find our starting five and let them start to build together. Now the preseason is just about to kick off. We want to give these guys as much experience to build chemistry as possible before the regular season starts. So let's hope that we can get a starting five out there and that they kind of stick together and all these guys that have these nagging injuries. And of course, Mitch Morse and the concussion protocol can all get back on the field as soon as possible. Now another piece of news over the last few days is the Bills releasing their unofficial death chart uh, in advance of the Colts game this evening. And the only real, uh, perhaps mild surprise is Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, uh, still listed with the second team. Jordan Phillips is ahead of him on the death chart. I'll say it's only a mild surprise because we've seen all offseason that the Bills are definitely bringing Ed Oliver along slowly for one reason or another. The good news is that Oliver has started to show flashes. He started to show that unblockability this week in training camp. He had a pretty good week. The last few days, he's been getting quite a few reps with the first team. And the last few days, when he's been with the first team, you've started to hear about the defensive line getting more pressure on the quarterback and Ed Oliver being one of the catalysts for that. Uh, So you do have to wonder why he's still listed with the second team. Uh, More more likely than not, it's some motivational-type tactic for the coaching staff. Uh, They want him to continue to work hard and take nothing for granted and and earn his spot rather than being gifted a starting role. And if this is the approach that they're taking, you do have to wonder why they're taking this approach with Oliver and not other rookies with a guy like, say, Cody Ford. There was also an interesting tweet that Josh Reed had put out this past Monday when he said that Sean McDermott had spoken to Ed Oliver after practice. And Oliver mentioned that he wasn't happy with the practice the day before. Uh, The tweet was a little vague. It didn't really talk about exactly what Oliver wasn't happy with, whether it was his own play or something the coaches or other players had done. We did since clarify that it was a more of a positive conversation and that Oliver was actually being hard on himself rather than hard on anyone else, that he expects more from from himself. Uh, and that's a good sign to see that he has that uh, reflectiveness and is a big critic of himself, and that's only going to push him to get better. And I think the bottom line is by the start of the season, if Oliver continues his progression, uh, he should be manning the three technique as we expect it when he was drafted. And I don't think there's a defensive player I'm more excited to see. Probably after Josh Allen, he's the player I'm next most anticipating to see tonight against the Colts. Uh, Hopefully he does get a decent amount of reps in there so we can see our first game action of Ed Oliver in a real football game. I think the last note I would make about uh, summing up this year's training camp is the continued flashes that Devin Singletary has shown. He continues to show that, that shiftiness that he showed off in college. There's been several reports recently about him being able to make defenders miss. He's also shown that he can catch balls out of the backfield, which is going to be a big asset for him going forward. Now, the last day of practice, he did have a drop, and Trey White did force him to fumble, so it wasn't the best closing argument for Singletary, uh, but I think it still bears watching just to see what happens. We have a bit of a crowd of backfield back there with, of course, LaShawn McCoy and Frank Gore ahead of Devin Singletary, and there's been some renewed trade rumors, whether they're just fabricated or not, uh, about LaShawn McCoy. Uh, For his part, McCoy has come out and ascertained that he's been told that he is, quote-unquote, the guy this year. Uh, I've talked a lot about how I think he's a great bounce-back candidate with his renewed offensive line. Of course, that is if they can ever get healthy. Uh, But I think it does bear a little more more watching over the preseason, over these games, to see what Devlin Singletary can show out there. And it may put the Bills front office in a position where they can start to listen to trade offers for LaShawn McCoy. And if there is an attractable offer out there, they may be a little more willing to pull the trigger if they know that Singletary can make an impact his first year and maybe play a timeshare role with veteran Frank Gore. So let's continue to watch that story develop. All right, that's the training camp news and notes from the past week. And now it is time to get into a preview of tonight's First preseason game, Bills hosting the Colts. And I want to talk about what I'm looking for tonight, what I really want to see. I'm going to talk about uh, what I want to see from a Bills perspective. Then we'll take a look at the Colts, uh, what we should look out for. And first and foremost, uh, what I'm lo- really looking forward to tonight is just to see football back. It's been a long off season of waiting. Uh, the last few months we've talked a lot about it, but it doesn't really equal up to the actual game being played. 
even if it is just a preseason game. I do find the first preseason game of the year, and in particular those first few series, uh, to be extremely exciting. Uh, I think our, how we watch those first few series is kind of magnified. We try to read as much into it as possible. And it, it all starts with our star players, or the players that we hope will be our star players. I mentioned earlier that I, I'm very much looking forward to see what Ed Oliver can do, our prized rookie. Uh, but the first player my eyes will be focused on is, of course, our quarterback, Josh Allen. I'm not really expecting or I don't really care about how great his performance is, but I do want to see just we've heard a lot about how he looks more confident out there and the players have really been raving about him. And I want to see with my own eyes how that looks and it translates onto the football field. So just to see Josh Allen back in action and see how he looks out there is the, the thing that's probably my top priority for what I'm watching tonight. I don't expect him to play many series. I believe Sean McDermott has mentioned that the Bill starters may play around a quarter of football, so maybe a few series. And in terms of the outcome of the game, uh, I don't really care about a, a win or a, a loss. It doesn't really mean too much. It's really more focusing on how our star players look out there and also how our, our first team offense gels. I know it's early and I know uh, we talked a lot about the offensive line not being able to play together, uh, but I do want to see some kind of semblance of an offense out there. And the same goes for the defense. I want to see uh, some of Brian Dable's new looks. I don't think he's going to show too much early in the preseason, uh, but it'll be fun to see if he does throw a few twists out there. We'll see if he tests some of these exotic formations that we've been seeing uh, scattered through training camp. Now, when it comes to the defense, uh, like I mentioned, the first player that my eyes will be primarily focused on is our star defensive tackle, Ed Oliver. Uh, sure, we've heard all of this training camp fodder about him being on the second team, uh, him really turning up his game is sparking the pass rush when the pads came on. Uh, but now I want to see it all with my own eyes. I want to see Ed Oliver in action. Uh, his first opportunity to show what he can do against an NFL caliber defense. Let's see if he can penetrate the middle of a NFL offensive line. Uh, the Colts have a very stout interior offensive line with all-pro guard Quentin Nelson at left guard. They have a really stout center in Ryan Kelly. That is when he's healthy. It's always been his problem. He has had knee and shoulder issues throughout training camp this year. Uh, their right guard, Mark Lewinsky, is a pretty decent player as well when he's healthy. Uh, so it'll be a first uh, formidable task for Ed Oliver, and let's see what he can do out there. Um, the other player that I'm really looking forward to seeing tonight on the defensive side of the ball, and that would be our, I guess, our defensive quarterback, if you will, uh, Tremaine Edmonds. I really think he's going to be a breakout candidate this year. We started to see it at the end of last year when the game slowed down a little bit for him. He just got such a unique frame. Another tall and lanky guy who can bat down passes. He's got great range, great closing ability. If he's moving forward, uh, he can move backwards as well. Uh, really, the potential is through the roof with uh, Tremaine Edmonds, a uh, guy who's only still only 21 years old going into the season. Just for some perspective, he, that is the same age as the two linebackers drafted this year fairly early in Devin White and Devin Bush. I think some of us, uh, even myself, may have lost sight of that when he came in early last year and struggled a, a little bit with his discipline. But I think uh, nobody can deny, and I can never deny, just the, just the amazing physical attributes that he does bring to the table. And I'm excited to see his progression uh, he's a guy that's going to be, he's probably going to be fun to watch all season, to watch him uh, progress into a star. Uh, and it all begins tonight with Tremaine Edmonds. Now, aside from the star players, uh, the other thing I'll be watching tonight are the position battles. I think we can start with the defensive line. I think our starters are pretty well entrenched in Jerry Hughes, Trent Murphy, and then, of course, uh, most likely Ed Oliver will end up being the starting three technique by the time the season starts. And of course, Starla Tulele will man the nose tackle position. I think we can safely assume that Shaq Lawson will be the third defensive end, uh, unless some kind of transaction happens uh, with him or with something else before the season starts. Uh, but then there's a there's a really an open competition for that last defensive end spot. A guy to keep our eye on is young second-year player Mike Love, the defensive end out of South Florida. Uh, by all accounts, Love's been, or by most accounts at least, Love's been moving up the death chart. He's really impressed the coaches in camp. I expect Love to play quite a bit in this game so the defensive coaching staff can scrutinize a little more closely what they have out there and see if he is ready to take that next step and be at least a backup to our starters. There's also 7th round draft pick Daryl Johnson, another defensive end. Johnson has some big fans amongst Bill's prognosticators. They see a freak-type athlete out there with that long, lanky built. 
he is probably going to have to put on some weight and strength before he can really be an NFL caliber player who actually sees playing time. I think Daryl Johnson's most likely route is the practice squad, but you never know. I think there is opportunity there where our backups aren't exactly set in stone. Eddie Yarbrough has never really done anything in regular season action. I haven't heard Eli Harold's name at all. He's another guy who I will be watching to see if he can translate some moderate success previously into a spot on our roster. I think in terms of the defensive tackle position, we're fairly set with our top two guys, whether it be Ed Oliver and Star Lutulale, and then our backups are going to be most likely Jordan Phillips and Harrison Phillips. So we'll definitely have a close eye on these young defensive ends going into tonight's game. Another position battle to watch out for on the offensive side of the ball, back to the offense, it would be that last wide receiver spot. Um, well, I think common knowledge at this point is that our first five receivers are set with Zay Jones, John Brown, Cole Beasley, Robert Foster, and then Andre Roberts, who's not only been seeing special team snaps, but seeing some regular offensive snaps as well in training camp. And it seems like the favorite to land that last spot, at least out of training camp, has been Ray Ray McLeod. Uh, the coaching staff have, have raved about him. He's been getting quite significant time with the offense. I don't see a real special player there. He's about 5'9", 190 pounds. Not the fastest guy out there. Uh, but he definitely seems to be endearing to the coaching staff. So uh, he's probably the favorite right now. But we do know that we have some other pretty intriguing prospects at the wide receiver position. I'm sure uh, Duke Williams and David Sills will get uh, many opportunities in this game to kind of show what they've got. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie is another player I've talked about before that I really like. He's a really flashy player. To me, he's a little more dynamic of a player than Ray Ray McLeod, but they're both very similar players. Uh, the biggest concern for both of these players, well, two concerns, I guess. Uh, the first would be, it seems like they're not the strongest guys and they are prone to fumbling and they've had fumbling histories in their past. Um, and also, they're not the biggest guys, so uh, you have to be a little concerned about the injuries kind of mounting up for these guys, especially a guy like McKenzie, who I think is about 175 pounds, which is uh, just a shade over what I weigh. I don't think I can take the physical wear and tear of an NFL season, so I don't know if he could either. Uh, there's also a few other wide receivers out there that have been flashing, at least at, at times in camp, in Cam Phillips and Victor Bolden. Uh, so it will be interesting to see uh, who does flash and, flash and who does get playing time in the preseason. Of course, uh, the question could be, what does it all mean if these guys do flash? Uh, we've often seen in, in years past that uh, there are training camp stars at the wide receiver position. Uh, guys like Jermaine Copeland and Brandon Riley come to mind, uh, where their August preseason stardom doesn't amount to anything. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, I, I don't think, in my own, from my own perspective, that Ray Ray McLeod has that last or perhaps two of the remaining wide receiver positions on this roster rolled up. So there will be an opportunity, I think, for uh, somebody to flash enough to have a chance to make this team. Now, I thought we'd close out with uh, going over a quick recap of the Indianapolis Colts team what I think about them, and uh, some players and potential positions to look out for tonight. And in looking at how this current team was designed, I think this is really um, really be quickly becoming a model franchise. I think the blueprint that they've followed over the last little while with their new general manager, Chris Ballard, is something that the Bills should be trying to mimic, and I think it is an approach that the Bills are trying to follow in some respect. Uh, last offseason, I was a bit of a critic of Chris Ballard. They had uh, one of the best salary cap, if not the best salary cap situation in the league. Uh, he did not panic. He didn't make any flashy high-end free agent signings, whereas rather he went after some uh, kind of second-tier guys and signed them to short uh, one- or two-year contracts. Uh, Eric Ebron and uh, Danico Autry are a few names that come to mind, the two guys that ended up having exceptional seasons for the Colts. Uh, but rather than spending a lot of money on free agents, he focused on building through the draft, and that he did. He had an astounding draft where his first two picks, uh, Quentin Nelson, the guard out of Notre Dame, and Darius Leonard, the linebacker, made the all-pro team. That's absolutely unheard of. He also continued to focus on the offensive line by taking right tackle Braden Smith, who's come in and solidified that spot. They drafted a few other nice players, a few running backs, and Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins, who both contributed for the team their rookie year. And I do see uh, that blueprint being followed in some respects by the Bills this offseason. We didn't go out and make any splashy signings. Rather, we focused on 
signing a number of guys uh, to shorter deals and to see which ones come in and stick with the team. Of course, if we are going to mimic the Colts' blueprint, obviously we're going to have to hit on those draft picks. Uh, that still remains to be seen. And nevertheless, with the Colts, you have a team that went from a 4-12 and season in 2017 to a 10-6 season last year. Of course, a lot of that success is not just based on what Chris Ballard did in free agency in the draft, but they also had Andrew Luck coming back from injury. That's obviously a huge factor. Shouldn't be understated as well. Uh, but bottom line is I'm very impressed with this team. They're a young up-and-coming team. They have a really solid general manager in place. They have a franchise quarterback in Andrew Luck, provided he continues to stay healthy like he did last year. Now he does currently have a calf injury that's a bit worrisome, but probably not as worrisome as the shoulder injury that's plagued him uh, the years before last year. Uh, they still have the lowest salary cap total in, in 2019, and then in 2020 they'll have the fourth most cap space in the league. Uh, so here's a team that's a model of spending responsibly, uh, building and hitting through the draft, and you end up in a position where you ha can have sustained success because you're never really in salary cap hell. And, of course, the franchise quarterback uh, is obviously the most important part of being a perennial Super Bowl contender, which I believe the Colts are or are at least becoming at this point. Now, in terms of players and storylines to watch in this game, well, one interesting one that may develop is the resurgence of running back Jonathan Williams, who, if you recall, uh, was drafted by the Buffalo Bills a few years back in the Rex Ryan days. Uh, he got some playing time in his rookie season for us in 2016. And then when the Sean McDermott era began in 2017, he was promptly cut. Uh, he's been bouncing around the league since then. And he looks like he's been having a bit of a resurgence in Colts training camp this year. So he might have some extra motivation coming in here going against the Bills, uh, the first NFL team that did cut him. He's obviously battling to make that roster, which should give him some extra juice as well. Uh, we can probably assume that this might be his last chance, uh, his last saving grace of an NFL career. Uh, so we do really hope for the best for a guy who the Bills drafted, a former alumni player. And uh, I do anticipate that he'll probably get uh, quite a bit of playing time in this first preseason game. Now, for those of you who listen to me regularly, you know I'm a draft nut, so I'm probably going to be watching the Colts rookies very closely. Uh, ben Benagu, the defensive end, is a guy that is really intriguing to me. He tested off the charts at the NFL Combine. That really drove his stock uh, right up to the second round where the Colts took him. Uh, he Before the Combine, he was probably viewed as more of a middle-round draft guy. Uh, and since I have all the faith in the world in Chris Ballard and his eye for talent, I do want to see, I'm very intrigued to see how dynamic a pass rusher Bernagu can be. Uh, he's probably going to get some reps against backup offensive linemen for the Bills, so let's keep a close eye on those matchups. And in terms of the star players on the Colts, Malik Hooker is one of my favorite players coming out of the draft when he came out of Ohio State. I don't recall... Before him, I couldn't recall a player that I had seen with as much range at the free safety position than Hooker. He had a few absolutely astounding highlight reel plays when he did play for the Buckeyes. If you have, haven't seen some of his highlight reels, I urge you to go back and watch uh, some of those crazy interceptions. There's one against Bowling Green, a one-handed interception that comes to mind. I do recall another interception against Deshaun Watson as well in college. So definitely check those out if you do like spectacular plays. And Hooker's a guy that I'll always watch. He'll probably only play a few series if he does play. But I'll be watching Malik Hooker tonight for the Colts. Okay, so I think that's going to wrap up today's show. I wish you all the best. I hope you guys enjoy the first preseason game tonight when we host the Indianapolis Colts. I, for one, will definitely enjoy watching. And until next time, go Buffalo Bills.